Welcome to today's Pastor's Perspective. I'm Ken Gray, serving here as a pastor at Calvary Life Family Worship Center in Cheshire, Connecticut. Today our devotion continues in the book of 1 Kings chapter 15, beginning with verse 16. Now we're kind of going through the, the history of Judah and Israel as divided, uh, divided nations. And we see them uh, in constant battle and war. And we see this especially in the case of Asa and King uh, Basha. Let me read for you verse, beginning with verse 16. Now there was war between Asa and Basha, kings, king of Israel, all their days. Basha, king of Israel, went up against Judah and fortified Ramah in order to prevent anyone from going out or coming in to Asa, king of Judah. Now we should notice here that when Basha did this, this invasion of Ramah and fortification of Ramah, it is really rooted in a, a fear. He's losing people to Judah. There are people that seem to be, because of the reforms and uh, spiritual reforms, religious reforms that Asa is accomplishing, they're migrating down to Judah for the purpose of genuine worship of God. And as a consequence, in his fear, he builds this city and he strengthens it to fortify it. He seizes it, fortifies it, and tries to prevent anybody from coming and going. Another thing that happens is there's a loss of a trade route to, from Judah to the north as a consequence of this. So let's read now in verse 18. Then Asa took all the silver and the gold which were left in the treasuries of the house of the Lord and the treasuries of the king's house and delivered them into the hands of his servants. And King Asa sent them to Ben-Hadad, the son of Tabramon, the son of Hezion, king of Aram, who lived in Damascus, saying, Let there be a treaty between you and me, as between my father and your father. Behold, I have sent you a present of silver and gold. Go, break your treaty with Basha, the king of Israel, so that he will withdraw from me. Now, we might wonder, was this a healthy thing or a bad thing? And it's really clear in the scriptures, and especially in the greater context of scripture, that there was a tendency on the part of even good kings to fall back on humanistic thinking. Asa, in his fear and his anxiety over this invasion of Ramah and the fortification of it, begins to wonder, how can I handle this? Now, up until this point, Asa had leaned on God. He had installed reforms, done things properly. But now, in his fear and in his anxiety over what's happening in the north and in the war between he and Basha, he now takes of the treasuries of God's house and his own house in order to bribe, you might say, a king in the north and, and bring him against Basha so that he might have a certain sense of security in himself. This insecurity, this fear, would eventually lead to damage both to his kingdom and to the people's kingdom and God's people in Judah. One of the things that we need to understand is when we make decisions based on fear of what's going on around us and the wars that we are engaged in in life, we are not going to make healthy decisions. We're not going to produce healthy strategies. He could have continued to lean on God, but as a consequence of his fear, it cost him greatly. It cost him the treasury of God's house, and it cost him the treasure of his own house. There was both a personal loss to Asa and a uh, spiritual loss of great consequence. So Benadad in verse 20, it tells us, listened to King Asa and sent the commanders of his armies against the cities of Israel and conquered Ehon, Dan, Abelbetha, Mecca, and all Chinnereth, besides all the land of Naphtali. When Basha heard of it, he ceased fortifying Ramah and remained in Terza. Then King Asa made a proclamation to all Judah, none was exempt, and they carried away the stones of Ramah and his timber with which Basha had built. And then King Asa built with them Geba of Benjamin and Mizpah. Now there is an appearance, you might say, of success in the strategy that it has. 
And there are some in the church today that have strategies that have an appearance of success, strategies that seem to uh, secure property, secure uh, various concerns that they have. But there's a greater loss. There's a loss to the house of God. There's a loss to the strength of the leader and his wealth. And there's a loss to the whole nation of Judah as well. But that loss will take time to be realized. It will affect future generations and not the first, this first generation. One of the things that we must be concerned about when we're developing strategies is that we would continue to lean on God and not move in fear, not move out of an insecurity and, of, and fear of loss. Because in that, there will come a greater loss to the house of God, a greater loss to our own personal leadership, and even more importantly, to the future, to that is to future generations, or you might say a loss of legacy. Let me pray with you about this. Heavenly Father, we don't want to be making decisions today as we're seeing a war that surrounds the church today, an invasion of our morals, an invasion of family life, an invasion upon the things that we believe on that are so important and so essential. But we ask, Lord, that we would not move in strategies that are rooted in fear and in anxiety and even insecurity. We pray, Father, that we would move in faith, leaning on you, listening for your voice, and be guided by you. Let us be guided by heaven, heavenly strategies rather than earthly strategies. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, God bless you and thank you for listening to today's Pastor's Perspective. We're going to learn many more lessons between uh, this whole series on the kings of Israel and the kings in the south in Judah. And they're valuable lessons that we can grow and learn and become stronger in as we face conflict in our lives here today. So we look forward to being with you next. Please join us for that.